Welcome back everybody to Forza Horizon 5 and today we're taking a look at the 2022 Lincoln Co. 05 Plus. So production of the 05 started in 2019 and this is a compact crossover SUV that is based on the same platform as the 03 Plus which we already have in this game uh, with this performance version of the 05 being introduced in 2021 and uh, yeah, I, uh, I've always liked the old 3 Plus, to be honest. It's been one of my favourite saloon cars to drive on this game. So yeah, it's really rather interesting that they've been able to, you know, basically take a saloon car and, uh, you know, pump it up into a crossover SUV, which obviously is a uh, massively popular kind of car nowadays. And uh, yeah, that should mean that this car is going to be pretty popular as well. Although granted, the more base version is probably going to be the more popular version, given, you know, this is the sporty version. But still, it looks the part, as far as I'm concerned, although I still believe that the uh, everything below the bonnet still looks like a Dodge Charger, but still, it looks fantastic overall. Certainly one of the more unique uh, crossovers going out there. And this Plus version has uh, uh, extra elements on it, so you've got this uh, front uh, splitter on the front there. Not sure if that's real carbon fibre or not, but it looks it. And then we've got the rear spoiler, you've got your quad exhaust with a uh, diffuser on the back there. So yeah, it looks the part for sure. Plus got side skirts to go alongside with it. And yeah, interior wise it's pretty good as well. Just like the old 3 Plus was to be honest. And uh, yeah, I like the... Uh, it's, it's got a simple uh, kind of tone to it, but you still have plenty of buttons to go in, go, uh, going on. Uh, and it's not dominated by its, uh, you know, its LCD screen and, what's, uh, and whatnot. So you still have controls for your AC and your heaters and whatnot. Uh, but it is an automatic, it's an 8-speed auto, same as what was in the 03 Plus. So, it's all very familiar in that regards, as well as the engine, which again is also the same. But, the, with this being a uh, crossover, it does have slightly more in the way of room. Maybe not any more room in terms of rear leg room or anything like that, but there is definitely more room where it kind of matters in a car like this, and that is in the boot way more spacious than the Lincoln, than the 03 Plus to be honest and yeah the hatchback kind of design as well also helps it be more practical on top of that um, but yeah it's got all-wheel drive as well which the uh, 03 Plus also had and like I said it shares the same engine as with that car so it's got a 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine which produces 261 horsepower and 280 pounds feet of torque. Now it is the same engine as the 03 Plus, but it does have slightly more power and torque, as it has 10 extra horsepower and 22 extra pounds feet of torque. Now the reason it does have that extra bit of power is because this is obviously going to be a heavier car, being a bigger car. So it weighs 3,964 pounds, which is 404 pounds more than the uh, saloon car. So quite a significant, you know, increase in weight to be honest, but yeah, the 10 extra horsepower and the extra uh, 22 pounds feet of torque should make up for that for the most part, and uh, yeah, at the end of the day you still have a very practical, unique looking, uh, you know, crossover that is, you know, all wheel drive, so it's going to be able to deal with any uh, kind of, you know, inclement weather or anything like that, just like the saloon car could, but Unlike the saloon car, you do have the extra ground clearance and you do have the extra practicality in terms of the boot space. So, yeah, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of this car. I'm typically not a fan of crossovers. I think most part they are quite useless and, yeah, don't generally look very good. You know, look at the likes of a Peugeot 3008, for instance, that the, well, at least the 2000s or the 2010s versions of that car will look absolutely dreadful. Whereas this, yeah, it looks a lot better than most, or if not all, crossovers that I've seen or come across before. So, yeah, but nonetheless, let's get out onto the open road and see what this car can do. Right, so here we are at the drag strip, so let's see what this car can do before we hit the speed camera, and then we'll get it around the track. So, yeah, with all-wheel drive and a uh, decent-sized turbocharged engine, this does get off the line pretty sharpish. And just like the O3+, Plus, it does sound pretty good as well revs to about the same rev limit as well on top of that so despite obviously being a more practical car it's still not lost its performance edge so there's 110 miles an hour which is pretty good there's another crossover uh, the mini countryman i hate that car that is uh, a certainly a far worse car than this as far as i'm concerned uh, but still yeah this a good sounding engine uh, it looks unique i know it looks in terms of design rather quite busy in some respects but 
once you get used to the way it looks in terms of, you know, oh my god, look, there's every kind of design going on in this car and whatnot, um, I do start to find uh, that I do really rather quite like it, and it's certainly not going to be something that you could easily lose in a supermarket car park, quite frankly. Um, certainly would stick out like a sore form, even the uh, more standard version. So, let's see what this car has in terms of stats before we hit the track. So, we are in low end B class. And, uh, yeah, there you are the stats. So, the speed, the launch, uh, and the handling are fairly good. Acceleration and braking are a little on the weaker side, but, you know, it is at the end of the day a much larger car than the uh, saloon, so the stats are granted going to be slightly lower and these are a comparison for the stats. So the braking isn't much different but the launch and the handling are. Not quite sure why the acceleration on this car is better because like I said it does way more but you know sometimes the stats are a little bit iffy on this game but yeah I can definitely uh, say that the handling on the uh, 03 plus is better than the 05 and yeah the launch is better as well purely because of the lack of weight so yeah but still as far as crossovers go, you could do a hell of a lot worse, to be honest, and I imagine that to get any more performance out of a similar car like this, you'd have to go a lot more expensive, like an Audi, for instance. So, um, yeah, but nonetheless, let's hear what this car sounds like, and then we'll talk about it some more. Yeah, you can definitely feel the extra 400 pounds in this car, as it does have somewhat more understeer than the 03 Plus. But considering it's on, you know, higher ride height and you know it's going to have a higher centre of gravity and whatnot, it doesn't roll around or wallow around or anything like that anywhere near as much as you might expect. In fact, it's very, very composed, far more so than you, you would anticipate for a car that is at the end of the day a taller version of another car. And uh, yeah, the acceleration is still fairly decent, although it is slower than the 03 Plus, as this can do not 16, 6.519 seconds, whereas the 03 could do about 5.9, and not 100 is dealt with in 16.518 seconds, whereas the 03 could do it in about 15.2 to 15.3 or something like that, I seem to remember. But top speed is still good, and it's 162 miles an hour. Um, where the O3 could do 163 miles an hour, so no real difference in that regard. Obviously, the extra horsepower and torque is going to help maintain that top speed, despite the aerodynamics obviously being worse, given it's such a much larger car. But yeah, on the whole, I really, really enjoy this car. It's not my favourite from the car pack by any means. I kind of like the uh, MG speed, uh, Sidebuster uh, a little bit more. Uh, just because that's a bit more of a performance orientated car and I do really rather quite like my um, EVs but yeah it's probably my second best purely because as much as I like the Wuling Hung Yang uh, in, in terms of you know being cute and everything it's not obviously a uh, car you're going to drive very much of in its stock form and the Volkswagen Santana despite being as good as it is in, as far as you know cars that are well out of time in, uh, and being still made in you know the 2010s it's yeah, it's very limited in terms of the performance and the uh, fun that it can generate, even if it's still a reasonably enjoyable car to drive. So uh, yeah, I really, really do enjoy this car, and uh, yeah, it's nice to see another Lincoln Co vehicle in this game because I really enjoy the O3 Plus. Uh, the racing car version of that is pretty good as well, and now we have a crossover as well on top of that. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased that this car, as well as the other three cars in the Chinese Lucky Stars car pack, are in this game. As it just has more variety and continues to show that you know you can have ordinary road cars in a racing game and have it still be fun. Something for the new Forza Mods is what you learn from, quite frankly. But nonetheless, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.